18 plus adults only and therefore may contain explicit or technical language, realistic and anatomically correct naked dolls or sculptures, dangerous customization techniques, including sharp blades, power tools, or hot equipment, and mature discussions of politics, sociology, and philosophy. Please do not watch this video unless you are 18 years of age or older. Hello, this is Sea Hedgehog, and you're here again on my channel, Justin Sober Ernest, and I thought I would go over the fabric that I've dyed and kind of talk about the outfits that I'm considering making. I'm not entirely sure how to do this. I'm, like, not tall enough, so... We're gonna use a chair. My room is not set up for using a ring light with this massive stand and showing my whole body, so fun. We have different layers of things, so this will be my undergarments. I've got two lengths of fabric. One will be used to make, which is on the crafting shelf. This is finally now basted together, so you can kind of see. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it in the video for the assembly. Right now I already have two videos and I haven't even assembled the real thing. But um, uh, this is such a loose weave that it is coming apart as I sew it. So I basted the crap out of it with a sewing machine because fuck if I'm going to do that by hand. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that. <laughs> um, and my cat is chasing it. So we're going to put this all up here on my shelf. So undergarments. Then we have like base underdresses, like first layer dresses, um, which like if I if it gets fucking hot, to be quite honest, I'm using as an outer dress. And those are these. I'm gonna re dye this because I'm not happy with the color. It it is truly a matter color. Like it is identical to the color of the matter that I dyed, even though I used fiber reactive dye for this. I cheated. Um. I was hoping that I would get a darker color. I wanted a dark red. That's not where we ended up. So I don't know what I'm doing with this. I've decided after all of this, fuck all other dye types. Acid dyes and I are BFFs five ever. Um, acid dyes are the bomb. If you suck at dyeing, you use acid dyes. But they only work for wool, so, and that's linen and hemp. So. And then this is another outer or inner dress. You can see there's like one little stain of indigo. So sad. I'll have to cut around that. But I've got two <laughs> sacks, linen sheets. So first layer dresses. Yeah, I don't know. Now that I have something that's red, I don't know what color I'm gonna do that linen. Who knows? It's a mystery. Um, it's gotta be something dark because I've gotta over dye it. And I've got this felted wool, which might become socks because I accidentally felted it, and then I was like, well, I might as well dye it. So now it's dyed. <laughs> Next is like lightweight overdresses. So like mid-layer. <laughs> Would be like a multi-layer cake. So this is the lining. It is matter colored, but again, I did it with fiber reactive dyes. This is navy and I used an acid dye, but it is navy, it is acid dye that is supposed to be indigo colored. So this is my dark indigo because I couldn't achieve it naturally. So, and it has some variation, like very, very faint. So I'm hoping it'll look like a little bit more natural. My hair is getting too long, so I can't just like brush it normally anymore. Another mid-layer dress is this, and the lining is going to be yellow weld colored. Probably a very pale yellow, because it seems from experience that with my natural dyes, I can't get a very dark color, so struggle us. Um, and then for slightly heavier overdresses, so like third layer, I have this, which, you know, has, was dyed not by me, so it is very even, but that's okay, um, because I wanted a herringbone where the two components of the herringbone were not the same color. So there's the one. The second one, I over dyed an indigo color to get a medium indigo color. This is also an acid dye. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even utilizing my chair. So this is like just an unbelievable amount of yardage. So yeah, there's that. Um, where'd it go? Oh, there it went. I was like, where'd the other fabric? I was holding two, okay. And then, I 
have this. Um, this is my diamond twill. I have a steel gray and I have a yellow and black little bumblebee. Um, and then we have, this is my super heavy freeze russet wool that I have dyed purple. And it is not Tyrian purple. It is supposed to be the like red purple of lichen purple. So I have a lichen, I have cork J, which I actually looked up on Instagram and cookies came up in addition to lichen and things dyed with lichen. So yeah, it'd be interesting. And I tried, I tried finding an English article <laughs> about it um, to figure out what it actually meant and no luck. I did find some random SCA person who says that it means lichen, but I don't know if I can trust them, especially when cookies came up. What does this word mean? <laughs> yeah, and there's slight variation in that. I used, so for the red acid dye, Dharma acid dye, um, or no, Jacquard acid dye. For the blue, Dharma acid dye. And then for the purple, I don't know why I didn't mix blue and red to make the purple, but I bought a Jacquard purple acid dye and then I mixed it with the red because I needed a red purple. And I thought about that afterwards and I was like, why am I doing this? Oh well, it's fine. And then finally, the bane of my existence, the fabric that I love but also right now hate. It is my matter dyed Pendleton blanket. I love it. I love the color. I love the weight. I love the evenness of it. I hate <coughs> and you'll see Oh god, every time I hit it, tums come out. <laughs> it's a little poof of chalk, and I can't get it to stop. I've watched it now seven times. I've beaten it against a wall. How do I get the tums out? <laughs> oh well. And now I'm like gritty. So yeah, the, the lesson in this is that um, you will never get the tums out. And so with the purple and the pink, my plan is to make like an outer coat, but I don't know what type of outer coat. I have plans for literally everything else and then the outer coat is like meh. Um, because I'd love to have something with sleeves <laughs> and not do a, a sleeveless surcoat. <laughs> not sideless, not, not uh, Gates of Hell. Those are like later. Um, but I want sleeves because I want to be warm. <laughs> Like that's the point, dot JPG. Um, so yeah. And so yeah, I don't know, I might, I saw somebody who just literally made like a big fat dress, like a big kirtle with sleeves, like really loose sleeves and just called a day. So I may do that, I don't know. But that's, yeah. I wanted to have a big full skirt and some little slits in it that I can stick my hands into, like a little muff. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so with this, I should get two coats. Um, one, like four overdresses, although to be fair, with these two diamond twills, I don't know how big it will be, so these may be underdresses or they may turn into something else. Because the fabric's narrower than I thought it was. Um, two mid-weight dresses and two light dresses and then undergarments. So like mix and match and I should be able to get a bunch of different colors. And I think, I don't know, I tried, right, kind of want to span the like vibrancy and saturation of the colors and you want to span multiple different Colors. I think I ended up with something that's quite colorful, um, quite you know, unique in the color combinations. Yeah. And then finally, which I guess I didn't show, I have this still to die. And I think this will either be a Shaw or a sideless surcoat, but I don't know that I can get, I don't know that it's gonna be big enough. 
It's gonna be pushing it. <laughs> um, and I want to dye this green. I want it to be Lincoln, Lincoln green. I'm gonna dye it with the weld, and then I want to dye it over with the indigo. But I'm trying to keep it in its own little home because I've noticed it doesn't happen with the purple acid dye and it doesn't happen with the blue acid dye, but the red acid dye is getting everywhere. And I've washed the red acid dye. I've washed it like at least three times. Um, this is that really light blue gauze. So yeah, but once you layer it over linen, obviously it's gonna be heavier than just linen alone, even if that linen is heavier. So yeah. Also, I feel like wool holds, silk and wool hold onto heat more so than linen. So yeah, but I have a lot of this and it's really wide, which is nice. So I'm gonna end up with quite the dress. And so what I hope to do is the closer to me the garment is, the tighter fitting it is. Because in order to not look like a sausage at the end, everything needs to fit quite, quite closely. Um, I need to do a little bit more research into the closures and make sure that I can do the type of lacing that I'm interested in doing all the way into like the mid 14th century, which is what I want. We'll see what the weld looks like. I'm like kind of nervous because I've seen everything. I've seen weld go anywhere from like chartreuse, so like a greeny color to like a golden color. And I'm hoping more of a yellow or a golden color because I feel like that goes better with red. I'm loving this color combination and it's reminding me of the dress in the beginning of the 19, is it 1998? Elizabeth movie with Kate Blanchett, but I actually don't think the dress is this color, and I don't know why this combination reminds me of it, but it does. Um, but I think it'll be real fun. The like idea of this, and I feel like it's more common in the 15th century, but it may just be the types of paintings that I'm looking at. The fun is that like you have this dress, right? You have this dress, and then you like, ooh, hold up the skirt, and like the bottom shows. So you like tuck the skirt up, you know, if you're like walking around and shit, and the color shows underneath, which I think is fun. Um, should be fun. Uh, but this at least makes me excited. Uh, it is perhaps more common to have an undyed linen lining to things, um, but I do not enjoy flat lining. I think it looks really ugly, even though that's kind of how you have to do this. And so I'm hoping that in making the linen a color, it will look more finished to me and I will be less upset about it flat lining. I'm also going to, even though I haven't, I don't know that I've really seen much about this, I'm going to actually flat fell the seams instead of just folding them over once and whip stitching it because flat felling to me looks more finished and on the opposite side, on the outside, on the correct side, it will look like, it will look correct. So that's what I'm gonna do. But yeah, should be good. But I have to have another linen, so for now it is unlined. Anyway. That is this video. Goodbye.